Hey, this is Christian's Wake Up, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the truth about Valentine's Day. The truth about Valentine's Day. Now, this is a day that many Americans celebrate, and people across the world, they celebrate this, uh, what they call a special day, because it's what we've been taught. We've been taught to celebrate Valentine's Day, and I'm doing this message in February, uh, before Valentine's Day, because it's coming up. But on the surface, it seems like there's nothing wrong with it. On the surface, it seems like it's a very good uh, thing to celebrate with your loved one, uh, whether you be married or not married or plan on getting married or have a boyfriend or girlfriend. But we have to ask, and I'm speaking to uh, the children of Israel and those who follow after Israel. So I'm speaking to you, too, those who are learning the ways of Israel and the ways that the Most High told them to follow. When you look on the surface, it looks OK. But once you uncover the truth about Valentine's Day, it, it gets very, very, very sketchy. So what we're going to do is before we even get into the history of Valentine's Day and find out where is origins actually start at, we're going to go to uh, two sets of scriptures that the Most High told Israel to do. So we're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2. And we're going to go ahead and read that and see what that says. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2. Let's go there now. Here's what it says. It says, Thus saith Yahweh, or the Lord Yahweh, Learn not the way of the heathen. I'm going to click on that word heathen, the Gentiles. So it says, learn not the way of the Gentiles or the heathen. Now, I'm not going to even read the rest of it because it goes into a, a whole nother holiday and a whole nother set of things. But once again, learn not the way of of the heathen or the Gentiles. So it means learn not their ways. Don't learn their practices. Don't learn the things that they do. Now, let's go to Psalms 106 and verse 35. And let's see what happened with uh, Israel. And let's see if they actually listened to what the Most High said. So Psalms uh, 106, 35. Here we are right now. Verse 35, it says, but they were mingled among the heathen. Let's make sure that we're talking about the same people, the Gentiles, and learn their works. So Israel did not listen to the Most High. They mingled themselves among the heathen and they learned their works. Verse 36, and they served their idols. I want you to remember that. They served their idols, which were a snare. Let's look at that word snare. So they served it, which was, wow, look at this uh, Strong's definition. It was a noose. It was a noose around their neck. Brown's Driver Briggs definition says it was a bait, a lure. So it's something that ensnared them, that trapped them. It was a noose around their neck. And right here, verse 36, again, it said they served their idols, which were a snare, a noose or a trap unto them. Now, I wanted to read those two because we have to make sure that we follow the instructions of the Most High. He said, don't learn the ways of the heathen or the Gentiles. So now we have this holiday, not holy day, holiday that's been introduced in the Western society as being something that's good. Churches around the country even celebrate this holiday called Valentine's Day. But what is the origin of Valentine's Day? I'm going to show you, and I was shocked when I first learned this, which is why I don't celebrate any 
of the Gentiles holidays anymore because the more I keep searching about these holly days, which by the way, the reason I keep saying saying it that way instead of holidays and keep saying holly days is because it's the days of holly, which if you go back and look at who holly was, it's, it's horrible. Um, it's, that is called a feast of, uh, what, what is it? The feast of colors and holly, the whole feast of colors was the celebration of the God Shiva, the God of destruction. So it's interesting that the Gentiles built uh, their holly days and made all of these different pagan days that they call holy, that people think that are holy, but aren't really holy. They're holly days, days of holly or days of celebration, I guess I should say. So the Valentine's Day the origins of it, we're going to do a Google search right here. Okay. So now we're looking at this thing called Lupercalia, which we need to find out what Lupercalia is. Right here, it says Lupercalia is an ancient Roman fe festival of purification and fertility held annually on February 15th. Interesting. Now let's go to Wikipedia and let's read about this a little bit. Here's what it says. Lupercalia was an ancient, possibly pre-Roman pastoral, pastoral annual festival observed in the city of Rome from the 13th to the 15th of February to avert evil spirits and purify the city. So we see already this is a Roman religious holiday from the 13th to the 15th of February for purification of their city. It says releasing health and fertility Fertility, Valentine's Day, sex, giving something to your loved ones. Um, then they go to sleep together. Fertility. Um, right here it says Lupercalia was also called Dies Feb Februatus after the instrument of purification called Februar, which gave February. February is its name. So now we know where February comes. J uh, January. January is actually after the god Janus. So now we find out that February is after this purification called February. And this is where its name comes from. Let's get through scrolling. Now, I, you see this beast over here, um, the wolf looking thing. But we're going to read about that. Uh, let's go on the left hand side. It says the festival was later known as Februa purifications or purgings after the Februum, which was used on the day. It was also known as Februatus and gave its name to Juno Februalis. Remember, I said the name of January Juno. There we go. Um, Frebulus or Frebuata in her role as a patron de deity to a god named Februus. So there's the god of February named Februus. And to February, Mensis Februarius, the month during which it occurred. Ovid connects February to an Estrucan word for purging. Some sources connect the Latin word, the Latin word for fever or frebris with the same idea of purification or purging due to the sweating commonly seen in association with fevers. Let's get through scrolling right here. The name Lupercalia was believed in antiquity to invite 
some connection to the ancient Greek festival of the Arcadian Lycaia, a wolf festival, and the worship of Lycaian Pan. Now we know who the god Pan is. Let's get to reading. Assumed to be a Greek equivalent to Faunus, as instituted by Evander. Justin describes a cult image of the Lycaean god, whom the Greeks call Pan, and the Roman Lupercus as nude, save for the goat skin girdle. So we all know what uh, Pan looks like. Actually, I'll throw up a picture of the god Pan up here because Pan is associated with um, Valentine's Day. So, as nude, save for the goat skin girdle. It stood in the Lupercal. The cave where tradition held that Romulus and Remus were suckled by the she wolf Lupa. Now it's making sense. So we see Romulus. Remember, remember, I did the whole message on how the Romans say they came from Romulus. Well, Remus was his brother, Romulus and Remus. And their mother was called Rhea Silver, which was she was supposed to be a wolf goddess. So now this is making sense. But the other name for Rhea Silver was Lupa. Let's get to reading. The cave lay at the foot of the Palatine Hill on which Romulus was thought to have founded Rome. This is a Roman holiday, a Roman feast. Now, let's see. Um, Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything else I want to read right now. Yeah, all of all of the rest of this we'll get uh, to later. Actually, let's read the sacrifice at the Luprico altar. A male goat or goats and a dog were sacrificed by one or another of the Luperci under the supervision of Flamen Dialis. Jupiter's chief priest. Now, that's that's just remember that. An offering was also made of salted meal cakes prepared by the Vestal Virgins. After the blood sacrifice, uh, fice, two luprici approached the altar. Their foreheads were anointed with blood from the sacrificial knife, then wiped clean with wool soaked in milk, after which they were expected to smile and or laugh. The sacrificial feast followed after which the Luperci cut thongs known as February. So this is where we get thongs from, even in Valentine's Day. That's a big thing. You go to, um, oh, what is Bed Bath Beyond? Or you go to Victoria's Secret and you buy your loved one a, 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 a flimsy uh, gift. And most men on Valentine's Day go get their wife thongs. So we see in Lupercalia, we see them getting thongs. Let's get through reading. It says, after which the, Lupercal the Luperci cut thongs known as February from the flayed skin of animal. Now, what most people don't know is thongs is also those whips that they sell at Victoria's Secrets or at the... Um, nudie places, different things like that. They have little whips and they have the strips on them and they hit them and they sell them on Valentine's Day along with the thongs that the women wear right here in, in this festival. And look, it says, and ran with these naked or near naked along the old Palatine boundary in an anti-clockwise direction around the hill. And Plur's description of, Luper, of the Lupercalia written during the early empire. Uh, let's read this part right here. It says, many of the noble youths and other magistrates run up and down through the city naked for sport and laughter, striking those they meet with shaggy thongs. And many women of rank also purposely get in their way and like children at school, present their hands to be struck, believing that the pregnant will thus be helped in delivery. And the barren to the pregnancy. Interesting. 
Interesting. Now, some say, well, that's not what Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is. It, nope. This is just this is another uh, another feast that they had. Valentine's is not this. This we'd celebrate something different. OK, let's do another search. Let's uh, go back here. Let's put in. Uh, let's see. I'm going to search. Lupercalia and Valentine's Day. I got it up right there. Lupercalia and Valentine's Day. You know what? Let's go to the History Channel. Because surely the History Channel would know something about it. So let's see. And this is updated February 5th, 2020. Let's see. Lupercalia. Let's read the whole thing. Here we go. It's talking about Lupercalia. We're going to read the whole thing. Lupercalia was an ancient pagan feast uh, festival held each year in Rome on February 15th. Although Valentine's Day shares its name with the martyred Christian saints, some historians believe the holiday is actually an offshoot of Lupercalia. Unlike Valentine's Day, however, Lupercalia was a bloody, violent, and sexually charged celebration, a watch with animal sacrifice, random matchmaking, and coupling in the hopes of warding off evil spirits, and infertility. Now, let's get through reading. Let's, let's see if any connection is made. Rem Remulus and Romulus. No one knows the exact origin of Lupercalia, mm -hmm. but it has been traced far uh, back as far as the 6th century BC. According to Roman legend, according to Roman legend, the ancient king Amulius ordered Romulus and Remus, his twin nephews and founders of Rome. Remember, their father is uh, Mars. Remember, Mars is their father, who's a god, supposedly god, and Rhea Silver is a goddess, so they're not even human. But okay, um, twin nephews and founders of Rome to be thrown into the Tiber River to drown in retribution for their mother's broken vow of celibacy. The servant took pity on them, however, and placed them inside a basket on the river instead. Wow, that sounds like Moses. OK, the river God carried the basket and the brothers down river to a wild fig tree where it became caught in the branches. The brothers were then rescued and cared for by a she wolf in a den at the base of the Palatine Hill where Rome was founded. Yeah, that definitely sounds like. Uh, Moses, but OK. The twins were later adopted by a shepherd and his wife and learned their father's trade. Hmm. After killing the uncle who ordered their death, they found the cave den of the she-wolf who nurtured them and named it Lupercal. It's thought Lupercalia took place to honor the she-wolf and please the Roman fertility god Lupercus. Now let's go to ritual sacrifice. Lupercalia rituals took place in a few places, Lupercal Cave on Palatine Hill and within the Roman open air public meeting place called the Comitium. The festival began at Lupercal Cave with the sacrifice of one or more male goats, a representation of sexuality and a dog. The sacrifices were performed by Luperci, a group of Roman priests, Roman priests. We're going to the Catholic Church now. OK. Afterwards, the foreheads of two naked leprosy were smeared with the animal's blood using the bloody sacrificial knife. The blood was then removed with a piece of milk soaked wool as the leprosy laughed. So here we go. The Feast of Luperco. In ancient Rome, feasting began after the ritual sacrifice. When the Feast of Lupercal was over, the Lupercy cut strips, also called thongs, or we go back to that word, February, where we get February, of goat hide from the newly sacrificed goats. They then ran naked or nearly naked around Palatine, whipping any woman within striking distance with the thongs. Many women welcomed the lashes and even bared their skin to receive the fertility right. It's open to speculation what the lashes represented. During Lupercalia, the men randomly, randomly chose a woman's name 
from a jar. That sounds interesting, too. Huh. That's what the children do in school. I'm just sitting here making a connection on in public schools or in even some private schools. They have a random Valentine's Day. Will you be my Valentine? So they draw it from a name from a jar and they have to give them a gift. Let's get to reading this right here. During Lupercalia, the men randomly chose a woman's name from a jar to be coupled with them during the duration of the festival. Often, the couple stayed together until the following year's festival. Many fell in love and married. So basically, they were getting a sex partner during this time. Okay. Over time, nakedness during Lupercalia lost popularity. The festival, the festival became more chaste if still undignified, and women were whipped on their hands by fully clothed men. So they got a little bit of, okay, cool. Right here, in, Plut in Plutarch's Life of Julius Caesar, Caesar famously refuses a golden crown presented to him by Mark Ant Antony during the Feast of Lupercalia. Now we're about to get to St. Valentine. Let's make this connection. There are several legends surrounding the life of St. Valentine. The most common is that one that on one February 14th. So this is where we get Valentine's Day. During the third century AD, a man named Valentine was executed by the Roman emperor Claudius II after being imprisoned for in assisting persecuted Christians and secretly marrying Christian couples in love. Okay. As the story goes, during Valentine's imprisonment, he tried converting Claudius to Christianity. Claudius became enraged and ordered Valentine to reject his faith or be killed. He refused to fors uh, forsake his faith, so Valentine was beheaded. Legend also tells of another story that happened during Valentine's imprisonment after he tutored a girl named Julia, the blind daughter of his jailer. The legend states God restored Julia's sight after she and Valentine prayed together. On the eve of his execution, Valentine supposedly penned a note to Julia and signed it from your Valentine. So that's where we get the whole from your Valentine from. Now, some historians believe more than one man named Valentine was executed by Claudius II, which is actually true. I think it was like three men whose name was Valentine got executed by Claudius. Uh, despite the ambiguity surrounding Valentine and his life, the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church declared him a saint. Now, now you can go back to the message on who the saints are or identification, identifying the saints. And we know that the saints were not of the Catholic Church. They were different people. But go, we'll go ahead and we'll just get to reading this. The Catholic Church declared him a saint and listed him in Roman martyrology as being martyred on February 14th, which is why Valentine's Day is on February 14th. But look at the practices that Valentine's does. So here we go. Origin of Valentine's Day. This is History Channel. Thanks to St. Valentine's reputation as a patron of lovers, he became synonymous with romance. In the late 5th century AD, Pope Gelasius I eliminated, listen to this, eliminated the pagan celebration of Lupercalia and declared February 14th a day to celebrate the martyrdom of St. Valentine instead. Although it's highly unlikely he intended the day to commemorate love and passion. In fact, some modern biblical scholars warned Christians not to celebrate Valentine's Day at all, since it's thought to be based on pagan rituals. Because it was based on pagan rituals. It was based on Luper 
Kalia. So just changing the name from Lupercalia to Valentine's Day doesn't make it not pagan. Let's get the reading. It's true Valentine's Day uses some of Lupercalia symbols. See, I, I'm, they mixed and mingled the days. Mixed and mingled Lupercalia with Valentine's Day. Let's read it again. It's true Valentine's Day uses some of Lupercalia symbols, intentionally or not, such as the color red, which represents a blood sacrifice during Lupercalia, and the color white, which signify the milk used to wipe the blood clean and represent new life and procreation, which they did during Lupercalia. Like many ancient traditions, there's a lot of haziness surrounding the originals and rituals of Lupercalia and how they influence Valentine's Day. Lupercalia is no longer a mainstream public celebration for obvious reasons, but some non-Christians still recognize the ancient event on February 14th instead of Valentine's Day and celebrate Lupercalia in private. So, there's no difference from Lupercalia than there is from Valentine's Day. One and the same. I want to go back here for one second. What verse was that? Actually, we can read this. Psalms 106, 35. But they were mingled among the heathen, the Gentiles, and learned their works. And they served their idols. February, February, Lupercalia, which were a snare unto them, which were a snare unto them. And I want to go back to Jeremiah 10, 2. Let's go back to Jeremiah real quick. 10 verse 2. It says, thus saith Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen, the Gentiles. Don't learn their ways. They created Lupercalia. Then the Roman Catholic Church comes and changes a couple of rules, makes uh, St. Valentine's a um, martyr and a saint and renames it St. Valentine's Day, but keeps some of the principles of Lupercalia. That's the scripture I was looking I wanted to. Evil good. Hold on. Let me see. Um, call. Let me type it in. I'm trying to find a, find a particular scripture. Oh, that. There we go. This is what I was looking for. Isaiah chapter five, verse 20 says, woe unto them. Let me I, let me show you what that word woe. That word woe. It means woe, alas, oh, oh, like it's, it's like, oh, so woe. Oh, not good. Th not a good thing. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness, Lupercalia, Valentine's Day for light and then say that Valentine's Day is light because it's about love now, but have the darkness of it. Red color, red, the white. The whole, um, it's about procreation, about loving your, your spouse or loving whoever and giving them gifts and go ahead and give them thongs. No. Woe unto them they call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. 
Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. This is your own. This is the wisdom of the Roman Catholic Church. They are the ones who created Valentine's Day. We just saw that already. They created Valentine's Day. And what does Revelations call them? Mystery Babylon. We just did a series on that. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Now, I'm going to end with this. I'm going to end with a video so you can hear from someone else, their own words. So let's go to a YouTube video. We're going to watch this real quick. Uh, this The title of it is all about Lupercalia, the pagan origins of Valentine's Day. And I'm just going to play this so that you can hear from somebody else and hear what they say about Valentine's Day. Let's go. Hey guys, I hope you all are doing well. And we have Lupercalia coming up. And in this video, I'm going to share with you all about this ancient Roman holiday and how it influenced our modern day Valentine's Day. So get ready, get cozy. We are going to dive in to the ancient Roman festival of Lupercalia. Lupercalia occurs on February 15th, so right around the time of Valentine's Day. And the root word in Lupercalia means wolf. So for this festival in ancient Rome, they honored the two mythical founders, Romulus and Remus, who were saved by a she-wolf after being abandoned by their parents. And this festival has evolved and changed a lot over time. But how it went down for the most part is on Lupercalia, you would have two groups of priests. You would have one group that were descended from the followers of Romulus, and then you'd have the other group, the descendants of the followers of Remus. And they would meet in a cave in the Palatine Hill for this particular celebration. Now, like pretty much all Roman festivals, it starts with a feast and a lot of drinking. But then it gets a little bit strange. So after much feasting and drinking, you would have some sacrifices. So for Lupercalia, they sacrificed some goats and then also a dog. So don't freak out. I mean, it was very rare for Romans to sacrifice a dog. I think Lupercalia is the only instance of that occurring. So because this festival is honoring the she-wolf that cared for Romulus and Remus, the dog is basically a symbolic representation of that she-wolf. So after the sacrifices, you would have one priest from the followers of Remus group and one priest from the followers of Ramus group and they would come into the center and you would put the sacrificial blood on their forehead and then wash it off with goat's milk. So this was really a symbolic representation of ending the great feud and violence between Romulus and Remus. So now it's about to get even stranger. So after they did that, they took the sacrificial goats and their hides and made kind of these whips out of the goat hides. Then they took off all their clothes. And so they took their whips and they ran naked through the streets of ancient Rome. So the priests would take their whips and whip people as they ran through the streets. And this was not a like scary or painful whipping. This was more of a like, haha, I got you kind of a thing. And in fact, people wanted to be whipped by the priests because it was believed that if you were, it would bring you good luck and fertility. And that fertility component is something that ties um, ancient Lupercalia to modern day Valentine's Day. And in fact, 
Over the years, Lupercalia became more and more about fertility and childbirth. And this is not the only pagan festival where something like this occurred. Um, when I was living in Prague, I found out that on Easter weekend, uh, the boys in rural towns would find willow branches and then tie them up together in kind of a whip and then just run around and, and hit the local girls with that to bring them fertility for the spring. So this is still happening today and it happens in various different locations around Europe. So it's kind of weird, but it's really just meant to be a fun little game and not anything painful or scary. So over the years, Lupercalia really transformed into a holiday all about fertility and childbirth. And it was so popular among the Romans that it even survived the collapse of the Western Roman Empire. So this festival actually lasted till around the 5th century CE, which is when Pope Galatius put a stop to this festival and banned it, um, mostly due to the nudity and drunkenness. He then replaced it with a festival called the Festival of the Purification of the Virgin Mary. So quite a different concept than Lupercalia. Though I find it very fitting and interesting that today we celebrate Valentine's Day at about the same time as Lupercalia. And when you think about it, Valentine's Day is kind of a modern fertility festival in a way. So today we do celebrate Lupercalia just in a different type of way. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you'll be doing anything for Lupercalia this year. So comment down below and I will see you next week. Bye. Now, I like that she, um, if you, if you heard what she said, that it's a modern um, fertility festival, just like Lupercalia. She, and she found it quite strange as well because it's one and the same. They just took out all the vulgar things and tried to make it more mainstream, which is what they do with all of their holidays, holly days. Now, I'm going to end with this scripture here. Let's go to, uh, I might be able to just go back. Let's see. There we go. John chapter 15, verse 19. It says, this is what Yahawashai says. Actually, I'm going to read verse 18. It says, if the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Because what did he come for? He came to teach the gospel, the good news. He also came and told them that the law was not done away with, which means in the commandments, it says you shall not have any other idols before you. Now, we just got to reading about Valentine's Day. We got to reading about Lupercalia and the idol Februa or Februum, which is a god. Then we got to reading about Remus and Romulus and the she-wolf, Rhea Silver. Now, just to give you even further on that Rhea Silver husband and Romulus father is the god Mars. Now, now Yahawash, I said, don't have no other gods before you. Remember, we just got the reading in the Old Testament, both uh, in Psalms 106, verse 35 and 36. It said they went and served their idols, which were a snare unto them. So we're going to get the reading right here. John 15, 18, it says, if the world hate you, ye know that it hateth me before it hateth you. Verse 19 says, if ye were of the world, the world would love it his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. So. As you get this information and knowledge of what Valentine's Day and Lupercalia are, and even the other one that she said, the um, purification of the Virgin St. Mary, which is also new. I didn't even hit that, that they that they changed Lupercalia into that. 
as you get this knowledge and you stop doing these pagan rituals, you're going to get hatred from your family members because they're not going to understand. It's just that you're giving, you're showing love to your spouse. I don't understand what's wrong. You're going to get that hatred. Trust me on that. Trust me on that. I've already, I've already started receiving it when I first said I wasn't doing, doing these holidays. But it says right here in verse 19, if ye were of the world, the world would love its own. So if you were of the world, you would still do those things and the world would love you for doing Valentine's Day. They would love you for it. But because ye are not of the world and you reject Lupercalia, you reject Valentine's Day. Then the world hates you because it says, but I have chosen you out of the world. So he's like, get away from these pagan practices. Don't do the things of the heathen. Learn not the ways of the heathen. You're like, cool, I'm not, most high, I'm not going to learn the ways of the heathen. Then the end of the scripture says, therefore the world hateth you because you choose to do his way. So all I got to say at the end of this is take courage. Don't back down. Do what Yahawashai, do what he says do. Yahawashai, for those who speak Paleo-Hebrew, Yahushua, for those who speak Aramaic, Yeshua, for those who speak modern Hebrew. Do what he says do instead of doing what the world says do. Because in the end, our works, we will be judged according to our works. And I just want to show my brothers, my sisters, and those who partner with my brothers and uh, sisters and who want to walk in the righteous way that we have to leave these holly days alone and get back to his Sabbaths and new moons and Shabbat wands, which is his feast days. So this is Christians Wake Up. I hope this message has been edifying for you. I hope that it has built you up and has given you more information uh, than you had before. Uh, leave a comment. I love comments and um, I can't wait till the next time that we get into the word. Once again, this is Christians Wake Up and I'm out.